Hello everybody, how's it going? So today we're going to look at how to back up and rip DVDs because let's face it, no one watches DVDs anymore and some of us will have quite a collection from back in the day I haven't watched a DVD in about 15 years so I went and got my DVDs from storage and thought well, some of these I might want to watch again so it's a good time to back them up and convert them into a format in which I will watch them on a media service such as Kodi or Jellyfin. So the tool we'll use to do this is called Handbrake and it's available for Windows, Mac and Linux. So as well as Handbrake you'll also need libdvd CSS which will enable you to bypass the copy protection and region restrictions. To back up your DVDs. If you're on Linux you should be able to find this in your distributions repositories. If you're on Windows you'll have to download this library and place it in some folder in the where Handbrake can recognize it you'll have to look at the documentation. I don't know where because I don't use those operating systems. So most of the DVDs I'll be backing up are Jackie Chan movies. I like Jackie Chan movies. So, so my desktop does not actually have a DVD drive, so I'm going to put this on my laptop and mount it over the network using MBD client. Okay, looks like it detected my DVD, so let's open Handbrake. So, Handbrake is pretty much a front end for encoders such as X264 and FFmpeg. Now of course it does not have all the features of those encoders because they are pretty powerful and to get all the features you'll have to use the command line interface but this provides a nice GUI which gives you a lot of features. Now if you have a DVD drive in your computer it should detect your DVD but since I'm mounting that DVD drive as a block device over the network I'm going to have to go to open source and stick the disk from here. And one of the great things is in your file manager, if you go to the disk in your file manager, on Linux at least, you can also get a handbrake button up here. Actually, let's try that. Now it takes a moment to detect everything on the DVD. Okay, once it's loaded your DVD, you'll be able to see here by source, the resolution of the movie, its aspect ratio, frame rate, the amount of audio tracks, and subtitle tracks it detected, which is useful when determining which preset we should use. So obviously 1080p is too high because most DVDs are just standard definition, so we can go here and select a standard definition, 720p. Now the presets in the handbrake all appear to be non-power ones, so obviously 30 frames per second is too much, so we can come over here to video and select PAL, because converting to 30 frames per second is pointless and might cause some problems. And I'm going to change this down to 30 as it's just a DVD, it's not going to affect the quality that much and we'll get a lower, lower file size. And I'm going to say optimize for source under storage geometry and here it says it detected three audio tracks but there's only two here so I'm going to say add all. I might as well back up all the audio tracks. Now you may notice that there's two of each here, that's because it makes a Dolby surround version and a two channel version. If you don't want that you could always go and delete the ones you don't want. And I'm also going to add all the subtitles. As you see it detected all the chapters. Another important thing to note is up here under title you'll see there are multiple movies here. By default it selects the longest running one. which is most likely the movie. 
Now, if you're backing up a DVD that has TV shows, you'll have to go and back up every single title because each title will be a different TV show, and you can generally tell which one they are by the length. So there's shorter ones here that are like two minutes. It's probably a trailer or something. And there's a 15 minute one. There's probably behind the scenes or bloopers or something like that. And you can go through and back those up as well if you want to. And I'm simply going to start encoding it. Now optionally, you can go ahead and stop the encoding at like 5% or something and have a watch and see if you like the quality and if you don't you can go back through and uh, change some of the settings and, and continue doing that until you find an acceptable quality and when you do you can actually save a custom preset now i should have i should save this one i'm gonna there we go And I can use this preset for future DVD rips. Now if you've got a really fast computer, it can probably encode video a lot faster, but unfortunately you're going to be bottlenecked severely by the DVD read speeds, and there's not really much you can do about that. Once the DVD rip has completed, you'll end up with a file much smaller than the size of a DVD, which is very handy, it won't take up lots of storage on your hard drive. Because the DVD is about 8 gigabytes, and of course this file here of the movie I just ripped is 1.5 gigabytes. And we could probably make that smaller without affecting the quality by using this preset slider. So I can change it to very slow, which would make the file probably 1.2 gigabytes or something like that. But it would take longer to encode. Cops uniform. Bad news What's guys, no project A. The colonel's disbanded our squad. Now all the audio tracks should be in here. I can change it to Chinese if I want to and watch it with English subtitles. And the quality is pretty good. So that was how to rip and back up your DVDs. So now you can either archive those or you can put them on a media service such as Kodi or Jellyfin and enjoy them anytime you want to watch them without having to fuss around with discs or trying to find a DVD player and stuff. So yeah, hopefully you'll find this useful. See you later.